in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. This is his name, whereby, whereby he shall be called the Lord our Righteousness. Many people feel like we are at sea. Anxiety and poor mental health are on the rise, especially among the young. People are subject to a barrage of hopelessness, whether political, environmental, medical. The world, especially in the last year perhaps, seems to have been thrown into chaos and death, both things of which the sea is a symbol in the scriptures. So what can we do? What can be done? What I plan to tell you won't be anything new, but it is good to be reminded of old truths in times of trouble. Some of you may be familiar with the symbol of our own patron saint, Saint Clement, the anchor, a result of Saint Clement's martyrdom at sea. Now the anchor is used to steady a ship when at sea, to keep it safe and in one place until the storm passes and better times come. Today I would like to explore with you how the Lord's name is like an anchor which can keep us rooted and safe until better times come with the advent of our Lord. So what is in a name? What does my name, being Charles, tell you about me? What does this church, being named after St. Clement, tell you about it? Probably not very much. If you met another Charles, it would be unlikely that we would be similar by virtue of our names. Likewise, if you went into another church, it would be unlikely that they would be similar by virtue of their patrons. But with God, it is different. His names tell us things about his nature. Now, Charles, being translated, means free man, which means not a slave. It is connected with the word churl, so it isn't particularly impressive. Now, whilst I'm not a slave, it's not a very useful thing to know about me, because slavery, thankfully, plays a much smaller part in our society than in days gone by. But our reading from Jeremiah gives the king to come a name to which it is worth paying attention, because it isn't accidental or meaningless, but tells us quite a lot. The Lord, our righteousness. In another troubled time long ago, when Jeremiah knows that destruction, shame, and exile are about to come, the word of the Lord comes to him and tells him of a better time. A time when a king will come of the line of David, the faithful king of old, who trusted in God's mercy and forgiveness, who will restore Israel and bring the whole earth to better times. To Jeremiah and his contemporaries, it might have seemed that evil has won the day, that the demons of Babylon have defeated the God of Israel. But don't worry, says the Lord, because the time is coming when I will have my day, and all will be well. And the name of the king to come is the Lord, our righteousness. Names are key in scriptures, especially God's name. Names are powerful. Israel trusted in the name of the Lord. St. Paul tells us we are justified in Christ's name. St. John tells us our sins are forgiven for his name's sake. St. Peter tells us we have salvation in his name. It is worth paying attention to. This name is the Lord's alone, and there is not under heaven any name given to men wherein they may be saved beside it. Indeed, David sings in the 138th Psalm, I, we, I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name because of thy loving kindness and truth. For thou hast magnified thy name and thy word above all things. God has raised his name to the highest point in creation. It's clearly important. So we should study this name in this prophecy and see where it might lead us. Firstly, this king, born of the line of David, and so presumably human, will bear the divine name, the holy name, Yahweh, the Lord. 
the name that cannot be uttered, the powerful name that saves and heals and smites, the name that, as we have just heard, is at the pinnacle of all things. Now, the apostles and the church took this to mean that in this human person, the fullness of the Most High God dwells. That this person is Emmanuel, God walking, talking, eating, and drinking with us. The God who dwells in inapproachable light and whose holiness is an all-consuming fire, whom no one has seen and lived, is here. And we can touch him and see him and worship him. The unseen became seen. The unknowable became knowable. That which cannot suffer was able to suffer. The word became human. And why? Because God loves his people and wants them to know him, to behold his glory for themselves, to share in his wonder and life and joy. He isn't going to be saving Israel and Judah from afar at the peak of the highest heaven. No, he is going to bring heaven down to earth and bring them together and rule Israel and lead them himself in person like when he led Israel out of Egypt all those years ago. So, from the name of this king, we know that he will be the Lord, the God of Israel, but born a human of the line of David. As St. Thomas said at the end of John's Gospel, when beholding the risen Christ, my Lord and my God. So, that is meant when Jeremiah prophesied that the Lord was to be born of David, But what is meant by righteousness? This struggle was more than just political, more than kingdoms and empires fighting wars. The salvation that this king is bringing is not going to just be over human powers, but over spiritual powers, over demons, death, the devil, corruption, sin. And only life himself can defeat death. Only the Lord of the heavens and the earth can put down the prince of this world. Only the incorruptible can triumph over the corruptible. Even in the Exodus story of long ago, God wasn't just freeing the Hebrews from worldly slavery to human princes, but as it is written, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night, and I will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast, and against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. These stories were about demons as much as they were about humans. This king is going to be one who brings peace to the whole of creation, both spiritual and material. He unites all things in himself, things in heaven and things on earth. And he came to earth and was born of a virgin, just as Adam, the first man, was created from untilled and yet virgin soil. He was obedient and faithful in the face of temptation, And where the first humans were deceived, he overcame the enemy's lies. As Adam and all subsequent generations of humans have died as a result of sin, which began with a tree, so this king also died, nailed to a tree. But death could not hold God, the incorruptible, almighty, most high God, and so was defeated. But how can we gain or share in this righteous person. By being born in human flesh, the king over all things has a real connection with us, enabling us to share in his victory over sin and death, and in his reign over creation. The king established a way of us enjoying communion with him, sharing in his life, in his incorruptibility, and yes, in his righteousness. The signs and wonders performed by Christ and proclaimed in the Gospels such as the gospel we heard today, show us that he is the one of whom Jeremiah and all the prophets spoke, of whom Roses wrote. Christ is this king, God in human flesh, who is our salvation and our righteousness, who has freed us from the tyranny of death and sin. This is what it meant when it is written that his name is the Lord our righteousness. He is the one and him alone who has set us free from death, sin and evil, to live in holiness and righteousness, whatever might be going on around us. So what? What does this mean for us now, in a time of chaos, in a time of bad news? Some of you might be thinking that you know all this, 
and you've been told it countless times. But these things are mysteries, which the simplest child can grasp, but can never be truly and fully understood by the wisest. At this patronal festival, when we are about to start a new church year, it never does any harm to come back to the basics. We can start by listening to the apostle in our epistle and looking to the examples of the saints. As Paul wrote, stand fast in the Lord. Let us return to the anchor, the sign of rootedness amidst troubled and stormy seas, which we can use to stand fast in the Lord. We should seek to be anchored in the Lord like St. Clement, who likewise stood fast in the Lord and overcame the fear of death as a witness to Christ. We do this through the sacraments, wherein we really share in Christ's body and blood, his death and resurrection, both in baptism and in the Eucharist. We also have the gift of the Holy Ghost, who strengthens us and helps us stay faithful to Christ, to his teaching, his love, his mercy. This, however, is difficult when we are prohibited from meeting in the Lord's name and sharing in his mysteries. This is why, in particular, at this time, focusing on the name of the Lord might be helpful at the moment. No matter how the world might be persuading us otherwise, we need to stay faithful and hopeful and true to all that Jesus commanded us, and not succumb to a world of despair, ambition, pride, and hate, but to always remain loving, merciful, holy, and humble. Now, St. Clement wrote the following to the Corinthian church. Then let us show ourselves obedient to his all-holy and glorious name, so that we may escape the doom that was pronounced of old by wisdom upon the ungodly, and may dwell in trustful reliance on the most sacred name of his majesty. Be counseled by us, and you will have nothing to regret. As surely as God lives, as Jesus Christ lives, and the Holy Ghost also, on whom are set the faith and hope of God's elect, so surely the man who keeps the divinely appointed decrees and statutes with humility and unfailing consideration for others and never looks back will be enrolled in honor among the number of those who are saved through Jesus Christ, by whom God is glorified forever and ever. Amen. In other words, stand fast in the Lord. There are many evils in our time. Pandemic, political conflict and strife, climate change and environmental disaster. But we as Christians are called to remain joyful and hopeful through all of this, in the faith and the knowledge that Christ has defeated death and is coming to execute justice and judgment, to make all things new and good and well. This does not mean that we are, have to remain happy, and some Christians forget there is a difference between joy and happiness. One is lasting and one is transient. But how are we to put the gloomy news and sorrowful conversations of our neighbors into perspective? Well, let us return to the traditions of our forebears and the saints and call on the name of the Lord. Now, many people feel helpless at the moment and they say, what, what can be done? What can we do? But we know we are never helpless for we can always pray, whether alone or together. We can call on the name of the Lord. The Jesus prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, a sinner, is one way in which I remind myself from whom my real and true salvation comes. Now, supposedly repeating that prayer, the name of the Lord, can bring one into a place of permanent peace and of wholeness, or so the monks of Mount Athos say. I find it certainly helps in times of anxiety to bring me to a place of stillness. We might also want to follow the example of what St. Clement himself prayed. Teach us, O Lord, to hope in thy name, which is the source and fount of all creation. Open the eye of our heart to know thee, who alone art highest amid the highest, and ever abides holy amidst the holy. Pentecostal and charismatic friends of mine claim they have seen the name of the Lord drive out demons and work miraculous healing. Now, whilst you may be suspicious of such claims, I believe that there is power in Jesus' name to work miracles even now. 
and that praying and interceding for the world, for neighbors, for friends, for family, works and has a real effect. So use the name of the Lord as an anchor in these troubled times to keep you faithful and rooted in the King who has fulfilled the promises of long ago and who will come to judge the quick and the dead and bring all things to perfection, to whom be glory and honor with might, majesty, and everlasting dominion from all ages, now and to eternity. Amen.